Good Thursday evening, September 5th, and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. Wenatchee police say a North Wenatchee laundromat was the scene of racial threats and harassment this week. The median sales price of a new home in the Wenatchee market continues to inch upward with a 4% increase in August compared to last year. Get ready for more unseasonably hot weather tomorrow and this weekend with record high temperatures possible. We'll talk more about that coming up in your local weather forecast. Highway 97 is reopened after it closed overnight due to wildfire activity in the area. The 15 acre Blewett fire was reported on Wednesday afternoon and is located at the top of Blewett Pass. The U.S. Forest Service says motorists can expect a single lane pilot car controlled traffic near the summit from mileposts 163 to 164 where fire activity and emergency response vehicles are present. 120 20 personnel are currently assigned to the fire. The Forest Service says the Blewett fire has been determined to be human cause due to its location adjacent to the roadway and the lack of recent lightning in the vicinity. Wenatchee police say a North Wenatchee laundromat was the scene of racial threats and harassment this week. On Tuesday, a 61-year-old Wenatchee man allegedly used racial epithets after getting into a dispute with another customer over the use of a laundry hamper. Witnesses told police the suspect used the N-word and threatened to retrieve a firearm from his parked vehicle. Questioned by police, the man denied the allegations. He was arrested on suspicion of felony harassment and committing a hate crime. On Thursday, the suspect was freed from the Chelan County Jail on his own recognizance. Chelan County prosecutors have until Friday to decide whether to file formal charges. The Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife has reported new cases of white nose syndrome in bats from nine counties, including Grant and Okanagan. The fungal disease attacks hibernating bats, causing them to wake early from hibernation and become dehydrated or starve to death. The disease was first reported in Washington in 2016, but over 280 cases have been confirmed since then. The new cases announced today are the first ones of the year for Grant and Okanagan counties. Fish and Wildlife is asking that any strange bat behavior, such as flying outdoors during the wintertime, be reported on the department's website and is reminding everyone to avoid contact with bats at all costs. Restoration efforts within the Chelan Butte wildlife area will impact hunting season after a wildfire burned the area last month. The Stamen fire began on August 20th and burned over 3,100 acres, which the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife says impacted critical habitats. The damage from the fire will affect hunting season with pheasant releases in the Chelan Butte wildlife area suspended this year. The department says bighorn sheep hunting remains largely unaffected and deer hunting will see varying impacts. Fish and Wildlife says while many native plants will recover naturally, staff will focus on replanting native shrubs, repairing signs and infrastructure with restoration efforts expected to last several years. When we come back, the Chelan-Douglas Regional Port Authority will share the final report of the Regional Sports Complex Feasibility Study next week. Construction is set to kick off tonight on the roadway to the Greater Wenatchee Regional Waste Management Facility. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Raising a family may have seemed overwhelming to your parents, but they weren't. Coach, teacher, life guide, caregiver. Family takes care of family. And as the circle of life continues, you now are their caregiver. It may seem overwhelming, but we're here to help you find the support services necessary so you can provide quality care to your elders. Call Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington at 1-800-572-4459.
Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmer's Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. The Chelan Douglas Regional Port Authority will share the final report of the Regional Sports Complex Feasibility Study next week. Phase 1 involved an analysis of public demands and needs for determining preferences on the design of the complex. Input collected showed a primary need for outdoor sports fields as well as an indoor aquatic facility. Phase two of the study aimed to compare aspects of a regional scale facility with local ones in terms of design options, financial performance projections, and budget costs. Now that the CDRPA has completed phase two, the final report of that study will be presented to the public at the Chelan County PUD headquarters on September September 12th at 11.15 a.m. Construction is set to kick off tonight on the roadway to the Greater Wenatchee Regional Waste Management Facility. According to a Douglas County Facebook post, many heavy trucks travel on South Webb Avenue to the landfill facility every day, which degrades the surface of the road. Douglas County crews will be working to resurface the road between the hours of 5.30 p.m. and 3.30 a.m. from now through September 13th, with the road remaining open to vehicles during the daytime. The county says the new strengthened roadway will prevent further degradation and lower maintenance costs. The median sales price of a new home in the Wenatchee market continues to inch upward with the 4% increase in August compared to last year. Pacific Appraisal Associates of Wenatchee reports the median sales price in the Wenatchee market last month was $507,500. That's compared to $487,750 in August of 2023. 74 homes were sold in August compared to 66 in August of 2023. That's up 12%. Active home listings in the Wenatchee market were way up last month compared to August of 2023 with 221 listings. That's up 40% compared to August of last year when 158 homes were listed. Coming up next in tonight's feature story from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, we will introduce you to a six-year-old pointer mix named Solobino. Record-setting heat is possible by Friday and through the weekend with a cool down early next week. I'll have all the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. Let Mary Maid's custom cleaning experts help you clean up your to-do list. Between work, kids, and pets, it's hard to find time to keep up. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee help. Mary Maids cleaning experts can help keep your home or business fresh, neat, and exactly how you'd clean it, if only you had the time. Call now for a free estimate, 509-663-1710. Serving Chelan and Douglas counties, Mary Maids, let us help. Caught in a conflict? Family, workplace, neighbor, business, housing disputes? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us to learn more. Want to stay up to date on the latest news in the area? Tired of paying for your news? Download the NCW Life app now. No subscriptions necessary. Get news, 
weather, sports, and more, live as it happens. Available for iPhone and Android in the App Store. Local news at your fingertips. Don't miss the stories that matter to you. Stay connected. Download the NCW Life app now. I'm Jen Mueller. Watch for my show, I Cook You Measure on NCW Life. It's part cooking instruction, part entertainment, and all about connecting over food and wine with your favorite Northwest athletes. Watch I Cook You Measure with Jen Mueller Mondays at 1, Wednesdays at 2, Fridays at 11 a.m., and Saturday and Sundays at 10.30 p.m. Right here on the NCW Life channel. It's time now for our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight's featured pet is a six-year-old pointer mix who is good on a leash and loves being around people. Meet Solobino. Pause for Pets is brought to you by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Mary Maids, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. Hi, I'm Corley with Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, Animal Care Manager. And today I have with me Sol Labino. And Sol Labino is our beautiful six-year-old pointer. And he's a really beautiful example of a classic pointer. And he's just so sweet too. He's smart and he's sweet and we love having him, but he needs a home. So he is our pet of the week. Sol Labino came to us as an owner surrender. Um, Unfortunately, due to a change in living situation for the owner, but they did come to us, which is great. We've had him maybe two weeks now, and he is doing really nice, really well. He gets along really nice with our dogs here. We don't know about cats because his owner didn't have any. Um, but overall, he's really just a sweet, gentle soul. He's quiet and he's pretty mellow. He is six, so I think that contributes. <laughs> but he's just a real sweetheart, real cuddly. He's still playful though. He loves balls and stuffed animals and he knows tricks. Somebody taught him or his owner taught him well. He can sit and stay. He's really good at stay. Yes, you are. And um, we're actually starting to teach him some new stuff just for fun to keep his mind active and interested and he's picking it up so fast. Yeah, because you're a very smart boy. <laughs> I think that he would be awesome really in any home um, based on what we know, which isn't a lot, <laughs> but, but we have got to know him and I think that he would be good with kids, my personal opinion. Um, I think he'd just be a really great family dog relaxing on the porch in the summer with everybody. Just taking treats and sniffing things, going out for walks and hikes. <laughs> yeah. So if, uh, if you'd like to come meet our boy, Solabino, we are open Thursday through Tuesday from 12.30 to 6, and we'd love for you to come meet him. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. Pause for Pets is brought to you by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Mary Maids, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope your Thursday was a good one. Once again, unseasonably warm out there today, and we're going to stay that way. We'll get to that in a second, but look at this beautiful shot with all the crystal clear blue skies out there outside our weather window this afternoon. Our Wenatchee SkyFi Tower camera up on Wenatchee Heights caught this beautiful shot as we begin this month of September, and it has been a hot one today. Yeah, we made it between 90 and 98. Going to be a little warmer even on Friday and Saturday. I think we'll be near 100 both Friday and Saturday here in the Wenatchee Valley. And that we're talking record setting temperatures both days and into Sunday. Might even see a little smoky haze out there. Not much today, but we'll see what shakes out this weekend. Today's high 94 degrees, 13 degrees above where we should be for this time of year. 81 is normal. Our record high, we didn't 
didn't miss it by much today, 97, and that was set in 1990. Started off the day fairly mild at 63. That's seven degrees above where we should be at 56. And our record low, 47, that was set in 1997. Sun came up this morning at 626, and we'll set tonight just after 730 at 732. All right, tomorrow's temperatures. Here we go into our record-setting territory, 98 Moses Lake, Afreda, and Quincy, 97 for Wenatchee, Eniat, Chelan, Omac also approaching 100 at 98, Cashmere 96, Leavenworth mid-90s, and even low maybe mid-90s for the folks up in Lake Wenatchee. And boy, almost all of these temperatures will be record highs for tomorrow. So we're going to keep our eye on that. The reason why, not only this large area of low pressure, but here's our ridge. And there is an area of high pressure down on the desert southwest that's bringing a lot of that warmth up our way. We're going to be clear tonight with lows in the mid to upper 60s. For Friday, sunny with record highs possible. Our record tomorrow is 97. I think we're going to be around 98 degrees tomorrow. So tomorrow could be our first record setting day. And this is what we're going to see throughout tomorrow and the weekend. Heat advisory for all of the area in gold. That includes Wenatchee, of course, Moses Lake, OMAC. We also have a red flag warning up through the Cascade. So keep that in mind as you're traveling on I-90. Getting you into Saturday, this could be a shattering record setting day. Our record is 93. We're going to see highs with mostly sunny skies near 100 on Saturday. And then on Sunday, mostly sunny record highs again, mid 90s possible. Our record is 93 on Sunday. There might even be a little bit of thunderstorm activity up north. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow. On Monday, some high clouds out there. You can see the gray and that may keep our temperature down a little bit, but it's still going to be hot folks with high temperatures to start our next week in the low 90s. And then things begin to change a little bit as we get into Tuesday. Area of low pressure just off the Washington and Oregon coast will push some clouds our way. That'll cool us off a bit. And you can see the northwesterly flow of air. We're talking highs Tuesday into the mid 80s. And it's going to cool down even more than that as we get you into Wednesday. Mostly cloudy. The low off the coast will slide down into Utah. And that'll bring some clouds our way and maybe some wraparound shower activity. We do have a 30% chance of rain on Wednesday. And it will be cooler. How about that? High temperatures in the upper 70s. All right, your seven day forecast 67 overnight tonight. And then we got to get through these three or four days. Friday, 97, 98 for Saturday, 96 on Sunday. All of those possible record highs. And it's still going to remain hot on Monday as well with some high clouds out there and 92. And then as we get you into Tuesday and Wednesday, this is where the real weather change will come in. Partly cloudy Tuesday and 85, mostly cloudy with a chance for rain on Wednesday with a high temperature then of 79 degrees. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Hi, I'm Eric Granstrom with the NCW Life Channel. We are on another fall sports season, and if you want to help us film some football, some volleyball, some girls soccer, we could certainly use your help. We'll pay you $75 for coming out and being a member of our team. All you have to do is email me, sports at ncwlife.com. That's sports at ncwlife.com, and say, hey, 
I want to learn how to run a camera. We'll teach you and we'll pay you right here on the NCW Life channel. Building your business is easy and affordable with television and digital marketing options from NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. Get your business seen and heard on 18 top networks, including NCW Life. Have you seen a local pop-up ad on your phone? We do that too. Target your market with NCW Life's managed advertising programs that save you time, money, and give you great results. Advertising with NCW Life Channel is the best value around. Happy Thursday. Well, trying to figure out the 2024 Mariners is just about impossible. Seattle scored 16 runs on 16 hits and a blowout win over the A's in Oakland last night. Household name Luis Urias. Yeah, I don't know him either. Hit a home run. He drove in four runs while Victor Robles had three hits, three runs and three RBI. It all backed up a nine strikeout, no walk, six inning performance by George Kirby. After wrapping up the series with the Athletics today, Seattle heads for St. Louis to face the Cardinals over the weekend. Mariners are five and a half games out of the American League West and the wild card race after last night's win. Houston fell to Cincinnati 12-5. Rangers beat the Yankees 10-6 to remain three games back of Seattle. The Angels beat the Dodgers 10-1. Yankees' recent troubles have knocked them out of first in the AL East down to the top spot to the wild card race. They're four and a half games up on Minnesota and Kansas City. City. Mariners and Roy uh, Red Sox are both in the picture at 70 and 70. Well, as the Seahawks prepare for their first game under new head coach Mike McDonald, DK Metcalf says he didn't agree with the offensive philosophy at first. Metcalf admitted in his press conference yesterday that when new offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb announced the plan for his scheme, DK wasn't happy. No, but he kind of, you know, nipped that in the bud. The first uh, offensive meeting that we had with uh, all right guys, I know we've had explosive plays, but you know we're gonna run the ball. So I kind of got mad <laughs> real quick, but um, you know I think the foundation of uh, running the ball first is uh, gonna open up everything else for me, Jax, Lot, Noah, everybody else in the uh, in the receiver room and the tight end room. Was that really the first thing you said? To you? Yeah. Well, he was happy to be here. Then he said, we're going to have <laughs> after spending the first four seasons on his of his NFL career in Buffalo, linebacker Terrell Dotson says he's been eager to get on the field in a Seahawks uniform since he signed to come here. I'm so excited. I watched before I came here. Oh, right when I signed here, I watched every single, um, I guess, individual like rep from guys that were here previous year that was going to be on this team and like starting from Leo, uh, even Artie Burns and just like from Spoon, uh, Jay Love and like uh, even Big Hank when he was with the Cowboys. And, like I'm just so excited to play with these guys. I mean, uh, we, got, we have a wonderful group. Uh, everyone's freaking intelligent uh, and I just can't wait to get to the rock with them on uh, Sunday. Coach Mike McDonald says it's amazing how much of a team effort it's taken to get things ready for the first game Sunday. Uh, I think we just, you know, we told everybody today, just how, or this week, how much, uh, how appreciative we were of all the work that goes into it. Uh, there's so many people behind the scenes, you know, all the players, all the support staff, um, everyone in the building. I mean, just, it's so, I mean, it's so much work and just to try to get it aligned and kind of bringing it in the same direction, which I just am very appreciative of everybody's attitude. And um, you know, I think we're on our way to that. You know, I think that's an ongoing process from here till eternity, hopefully. And, um, but here we are, you know, so we got to go play a football game and, and uh, go try to put our best foot forward. McDonald says he expects a few bumps in the road as the uh, as he debuts as a head coach Sunday. Yeah, I mean we're confident in our process. Uh, I would just say that we've got everything worked out. That's not I wouldn't say that. I mean we're we're aware that things can happen that we're probably that we might not be prepared for. We're, we've tried our very best to be you know dotting our eyes and p's and our q's, being thorough in our, in our preparation, uh, confident in our people that you know on their roles and everything. Our communication has been really smooth in the preseason. There's been a couple things that we've debriefed on that we've we've had to make right, and uh, that's okay. You know, that's 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 what's going to happen. So, I think in those times, it's just you know staying present, um, being a clear, being clear, you know, communication-wise, and uh, making just trying to make the best decision you can in the moment from from having you know assessed how you're going to try to play the game from the get-go, and then you know obviously how it evolves you know, as the game starts to declare itself. So. 
uh, th you know, those are things that uh, we'll be, you know, we'll be learning from and growing from as the weeks kind of start to, you know, progress here. But I uh, feel good where we're at. Seattle and Denver kick off at Lumen Field Sunday at 105 on CBS. Well, the second weekend of the college football season for Northwest teams is nearly upon us. Washington hosts Eastern Michigan in its Big Ten debut Saturday at 12:30. Central uh, make that Central Washington opens the 2024 campaign on the road at San Diego at one o'clock. Eastern Washington hosts Drake at four o'clock on ESPN Plus. Washington State hosts Texas Tech at uh, Martin Stadium Saturday night at seven o'clock. That'll be on Fox. The opening weekend of the prep football season gets underway. Actually, tonight, Grandview plays host to Toppenish at 7 o'clock, while East Valley's on the road at Riverview. Tomorrow night, finds Othello at Ellensburg. Afreda hosts Prosser. Sela is at Quincy. All seven schools of the Big Nine are scattered all over the place for the six games tomorrow night. Ike plays at Grandview, while Wenatchee is at Lake City. Sunnyside is at Skyline. Davis hosts Rogers of Spokane. West Valley visits North Creek. Moses Lake is in Rigby, Rigby Idaho. Eastmont has the lone Saturday game at Bonnie Lake. That starts at 4 o'clock. Cashmere opens its first season in the SCAC at Wapato tomorrow night. Other action finds Royal at Kiona Benton. Connell hosts Zilla. Waluk visits Natchez Valley. Weston McEwen visits College Place. The three teams that remain in the Caribou Trail League all have non-conference games as Chelan visits Jenkins Chewila. OMAC plays at Okanagan and Cascade hosts Liberty Bell. The rundown on the 2B schedule for Central Washington has Colfax at Lake Roosevelt. Brewster visits Reardon. Tanaska takes on Kettle Falls, and Manson is at Cleelum. The 1B schedule has Moses Lake Christian at Sunnyside Christian tomorrow at 7, while Bridgeport plays at Waterville Mansfield. Soap Lake is at St. John Endicott Le Center. Eniad has a Saturday game at Tico Rosalia at 6 o'clock. That's Sports News. I'm Eric Granstrom. Have a happy Thursday. On the next edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, we're here on the campus of Wenatchee Valley College. September 20th, the Food Truck Fair is back. It's Food Truck Night, night spelt with a K. Get it, Wenatchee Valley College. Every imaginable food truck you can think of, kids' activities, a beer garden, all of it to benefit the Wenatchee Valley College Foundation. Rachel Evie will be my guest on a beautiful day on a beautiful campus on the next edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night. Thank you.